Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. One of my favorite topics. Let's do it again. What conspiracy theories do you low-key believe in, or high-key, or believe in? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Kroger had this big campaign about how they were going to start recycling their plastic bags and had these displays in all of the stores where you could return your bags so they can be recycled. Within a week, all of the bags got really super shitty. They're thin and rip easily, but that's okay because recycling. All of those big displays they had set up for bringing in your old bags disappeared within another couple of weeks. It's been years, and the bags are still shitty as ever. No one brings back their old bags. I think it was a bait and switch to just start using cheaper bags without dealing with a ton of complaints. I believe that 4Ocean, that company that sells the $20 bracelets and picks up one pound of ocean trash per bracelet, is allegedly a sophisticated drug smuggling ring. Who's going to investigate a company trying to clean up the ocean, huh? They have multiple boats that go out to sea and return full of trash every day. What's under the trash, huh? They're purchasing a huge ocean, going ship to pick up even more trash. This is a tremendous amount of money. Ships like that are crewed and fueled by 25 grand a day minimum, not to mention the cost of building your own custom 110-foot ship. How many $20 bracelets is that a day? They transport the trash in the enclosed box trucks from the boats for processing at private and walled-off four ocean recycling centers instead of using municipal dumpsters. They hire crazy amounts of people or accountants, more than any other conservation group I've ever seen. The amount of money they're throwing around is nuts. They are a for-profit company and do not receive outside grants or sponsorships. They're not required to make their finances public. Everyone I know that has the bracelets got them for free. They pass them out by the thousands at conservation events. I can't find a single person that has actually paid for one. They cost like 10 cents or less to make in China. Also, these things aren't at the cultural critical mass that even the Livestrong bracelets reached for me to believe populations of people are purchasing them in droves. I rarely see four ocean bracelets around, even here at the Fort Lauderdale Boca epicenter. I think they spoof cash sales of these bracelets, which are handed out by the thousands, to launder the money from importing drugs. They have a smattering of cheap-to-make products that are marked up to huge margins, which are easy to give away at cleanups and fake as sales as well. $100 for shitty Home Depot gloves with a mesh bag, 50 cents to manufacture at most. I think I have like five blue four ocean mesh bags I've gotten for free at beach cleanups, which if you look at their website are like $29.99. They give out hundreds at these events. The founders or owners move to Bali full-time just to be as far away as possible when shit hits the fan. Indonesia does not have an extradition agreement with the U.S. Since the pandemic, they have set up a whole land-based operation in Guatemala and Haiti employing hundreds of locals. I'm not normally a conspiracy theory guy, but just the plausibility of an ocean conservation bracelet company being a hundreds of millions of dollars front for drug smuggling is fun to think about. You know, I never really gave this company a second thought because of you know, whatever. But um, you present a very interesting case. And uh, sure, I'll bite. Sounds good to me. I 100% believe that governments, especially the U.S., work towards more and more division amongst the people, be it left versus right, black versus white, gay versus straight, because a society that's divided and too busy fighting each other can't unite and fight against the real tyrants money. Many U.S. politicians actively work for the billionaire class to remove health care, social safety nets, access to education, and deliberately make us dumber, sicker, and poorer. The purpose is to create a workforce surplus where the people are fighting over horrible jobs that allow more wealth to flow to the top. Not really a conspiracy, since it's actually happening. We just don't know how much planning and collusion between the architects is going on, but it's definitely going on. 
Solidarity amongst the working class is the only thing that can save us. If you vote for anybody that supports right-to-work legislation, you're either an idiot, morally corrupt, or just both. I firmly believe that a lot of the advertising and other tools for increasingly public visibility of cryptocurrency, in particular of Bitcoin, were an orchestrated attempt by a relatively small number of people with massive holdings to draw in enough people that didn't understand what they were investing in to increase the available liquidity enough to facilitate the closing out of their positions without crashing the market as quickly or severely. Government UFO cover-up I am no little green men nut, but there is some weird shit flying around in our atmosphere and underwater and somebody knows more than we do. Either the governments have invented technology leaps and bounds beyond what we thought possible, or we have visitors, aliens, future people, interdimensional beings, no idea, but something is out there. We have several large Chinese buffet restaurants in our town, and I'm firmly convinced that they are money laundering schemes. There are always people there, but they're not busy, and I don't know how they could turn a profit knowing that margins are razor thin with any restaurant. That despite knowing how badly heavily subsidized added sugars and nutrition-free foods hurt people, companies bribe, lobby politicians under the guise of helping farmers to make sure that bad-for-you food is the most attainable kind. It's not out of malice, but because they want more diabetes to help fuel the insulin and diabetes supplies industry that would generate barely a shadow of a fraction of what it does without the terrible food options they push. Let me give you a really funny one. We know that comics were used as propaganda tools to garner support for the war effort in World War II. We know that the U.S. Army specifically incorporated comic writers into the United States Office of War Information, and most people think that this was solely to administer the values and issues the government wanted to espouse to children. But kids back home were actually able to follow along the war effort almost like it was an actual theater of violence to consume as entertainment. It's an even lesser known fact that the various government agencies have classified and redacted files on various comics that either incidentally described sensitive information or outright seemingly copied true-to-life events over the decades. I don't really believe in this. It's just a fun thought exercise. But it would be so crazy to think that if early comics were based on real classified operations, so too were the characters in them. We have many tales of incredible true-to-life heroes of their times, but they're almost always one-off stories, not to be repeated, but rather than the characters of these comics being proxy stand-ins for these various acts of valor performed by numerous counts of soldiers, what if they really were just based on specific people? My ex rehomed my dog while I was away for work because she hated him. I got a call from her one day saying the dog had been run over by a car and she was sorry. I asked where he was and she said her dad came over and buried him somewhere on the property, but she didn't know where. I got home and there was no evidence of any animal being run over and when I asked where he had buried, she just shrugged it off saying that her dad took care of everything and not to worry about it. There was a cover-up at Roswell. No way in hell did that guy mistake a weather balloon as made of a material thin yet extremely durable. Also, over 300 people report seeing alien humanoids during the incident. They all described them in the exact same way. Reminder, this is well before things like social media, so it's unlikely that they all coordinated it beforehand. Edit. I should clarify that I'm not claiming that the government was 100% covering up aliens, but they were hiding something. That a lot of the more outlandish conspiracy theories out there, flat earth, fake moon landing, lizard people, etc., are false flags created by the perpetrators of the real conspiracies to make anyone who believes in them look ridiculous. Lee Harvey Oswald was an intelligence asset. JFK was probably shot by people attached to the Bay of Pigs op and Oswald was blamed in an attempt to generate a war with Cuba. LBJ and Dulles covered it up, wittingly or unwittingly, because the former did not want war with the Eastern Bloc and the latter wanted to protect the reputation of the agency. 
One, that the world's elite have a long-term plan to make sure the poor and middle class no longer have ownership of property. They want everyone to essentially subscribe to life like the old company stores. Real, healthy food will also be prohibitively expensive. AI is only going to help make the non-rich obsolete. Two, that most of the social division we currently are experiencing is from Chinese and Russian psyops. The Chinese government is one of the biggest donors to U.S. universities to gin up leftist rhetoric and lessen our educational effectiveness overall and control a lot of social media and conspiracy sites to gin up the right. People were just as dumb or crazy in the 90s, before the internet was huge, but the divide was not as great. So, if you ask me, do I think that there is some global cabal of super, super rich people, families that go back to Pope makers and, you know, the families in Italy that supersede all these, you know, Medici and all that good stuff. Do they make decisions that run the world? I mean, together, no, but people have a collective at that level to increase their income. So yeah, the things they do will make them richer and make us poor. They just have a lot more access to lawmaking. So we lose. That about to fire again after getting him in the neck, Lee Harvey Oswald was bamboozled to see JFK's head suddenly explode in pink mist through his rifle scope. A hungover Secret Service agent in a following motorcade car had a misfire with his newly issued AR-15 and thus delivered the coup de grace. This accounts for the removal and disappearance of the windscreen of the presidential car. The shenanigans around the autopsies with the remains of his brain going missing would have shown AR-15 bullet fragments. The AR-15 no longer being issued to Secret Service agents after the assassination and Oswald raving to reporters about being a patsy. Whenever there was an oil shortage in the eastern USA in 2021, everyone seems to think, oh, random hackers, and that's the end of it. No way. First of all, no one has been caught yet, which is crazy, although the FBI was able to recover about half the ransom money. Second of all, this all happened five months after the shutdown of the Keystone XL pipeline expansion. Timelines are admittedly a little funny. The revocation of funding was announced in January 2021, and layoffs stated immediately. But the project as a whole wasn't completely abandoned until June. The pipeline expansion was supposed to generate $3.4 billion in economic activity, and two years in and 8% done, there was a change in the USA leadership, and the new president revoked the subsidies. So the project was scrapped. This led to a direct loss of 6,000 jobs, plus probably a bunch more from suppliers and such to the pipeline work. Anyway, my point is, you now have 6,000 plus pipeline experts out of work and embittered against their government that just did that to them. You've also got a business, Worldly Parsons, that just lost out on hundreds of millions. Now, I'm not saying a bunch of people with all the requisite skills have just been given a motive, but I am saying that after the government kind of screwed the pipeline industry, five months later, there was a situation where all the oil on the East Coast was held hostage due to an attack on another pipeline. No, that's is what I'm saying. And the fact there hasn't been any arrests, and the whole thing has kind of been buried? That's suspicious. Are you implying that pipeline workers and experts in the field held oil hostage for ransom? That's spicy. It's interesting. So, again, you present a good case, and something that could have a lot of angry people just do something about it. Imagine if everybody who's angry did something about it. German government controls the court. There was a case where a private TV channel got sued for using public broadcasting material that had no copyright. They got sued because they criticized the material, and that's an unwritten law. Their court said it's basically a shut case, since it's public material and will most likely get dismissed. Hearing got delayed because the judge got sick, was replaced, and the lawsuit was successful.